It must be hard running stories when you're a video game developer, let alone an indie developer, trying to offer the player something fresh whilst also trying to make the gameplay unique within a very small team. Having the player come out of their experience remembering the title for being something special. It's quite hard to do both, or at least weigh both of them up. Whilst Perception has interesting gameplay mechanics and the overall story wasn't bad, it did fall short due to it being overly predictable and the gameplay teased at what it could have actually been having the game end on a revelation that was predicted and called at the very start. And I kind of feel hard done by as the player. Released in May of 2017, Perception is a unique horror game made by the Deep End Games. Some of the team members were behind Bioshock and Dead Space. So when I found out that they were making a small indie title, to say the very least, I was more than excited. Now, you're probably looking at the footage and thinking, what the hell am I looking at? Well, you play Cassie, a blind woman visiting a house for initial unknown reasons. The way that she can see is very much in the same way as Daredevil or the clickers from The Last of Us. Echolocation, where a sound is made and reverberation creates and paints a picture to Cassie of her surroundings. Cassie is kind of clairvoyant as well, and throughout her journey, in the house she can pick up objects and memories get played back to her. Like any video game, each audio snippet reveals a bit of the story behind what previously went on with the characters living inside that house. I mentioned before that this is also a horror game, and I'm kind of torn about this. Atmosphere for me is what separates a good horror video game from a shit one. Starting off in Perception, you are generally greeted by fairly uneventful jump scares. However, within the first hour of the game, it says the house is listening. And upon tapping your cane on the ground, you can hear something nearby reacting to your taps. And for a little while, it painted quite the scary tone. But that's about it. Very few times did I actually ever see any threat. And mostly because I think it was a scripted event. The game offers places for the player to hide. However, I rarely found myself using them because nothing really hunted me down. You can play any frictional game where they set the tone and atmosphere beautifully. Soma for me was truly horrifying when something was hunting me down. Just imagine doing that blind. I feel like this was a missed opportunity and not fully fleshed out. Maybe they'll just try and reach deadlines for a release. But very often walking around and tapping my cane did absolutely nothing but apart from show me the way that I needed to walk. I'd later realized that I was never really in any danger and I tapped my merry way to the end of the game, thus voiding any atmosphere that the developers may have originally created. Another thing that broke immersion was the use of speakers. The game tells you that the house is listening, suggesting that things hunt you down. Tapping your cane is supposed to notify them of your presence. But walking up to a tape player and hitting play is just fine by the ghosts. Also, talking to a dude on the phone is also fine too. But tapping your cane? Forget about it. I guess paranormal creatures hate disabled people. I really did like tapping my cane though, it was a really interesting and cool mechanic, and I have not really played any games like that before. Individual taps to paint a picture ahead was a truly special thing, and I give them a big thumbs up for being original. The game does have puzzles, and they're not really puzzles. I've seen reviews online complimenting the game on these puzzles, but please don't. If the way to work out a puzzle is via taking photos and then another character telling you the numbers for the code, whilst that's cool and all with the interaction between you and another character, I feel like it's incredibly lazy and spoon-fed my gameplay and the actual answers. And it's conflicting because the game is partially a walking sim and I'm fine with the lack of gameplay walking sims have, but this is a walking sim that hints at having gameplay but never really does, and for that I find it very frustrating. I really wanted to play a game, but instead I got a game that teased me of its potential. It's the game is equivalent of sexual frustration. I love walking sims, and I found it oddly annoying that perception felt confused at what it is, and no, I'm not assuming it's genre. The characters and the stories around them aren't too bad. Taking Cassie through several generations of the tenants that live through the house, each generation of tenants had their own unique story. I really liked Betty, who was a hard done by housewife in the 1940s, trying to apply for the army to get assigned to a post in Europe so she can find her husband and be with him, instead being offered army desk jobs. She came off as a very strong and persistent feminist character, and I really liked that whole segment of the game the most. 
Whilst the characters are nothing short of spectral apparitions, very much in the same vein of Everybody Has Gone to the Rapture, I did feel something for each character towards the end of each chapter. And this is something that I can't honestly say too often for a lot of indie and AAA titles. But that all feeds into the overall story of Cassie and why she is there. And it just falls flat the moment you realise how predictable the ending is. You generally play a game knowing your character's motives or goals. Sometimes the game deliberately hides their motives or goals from the player and reveals them towards the end. Now, this is a fairly risky move if the end is predictable as fuck. I knew that Joel was going to be taking Ellie to the Fireflies, and I had no idea what he was going to do at the end. But I knew that when I walked into that house in Perception, I knew instantly who I was and why I was there before my character even did. For the lack of gameplay and the unaccomplished feeling that I got after playing this game, I'm going to recommend it as I did enjoy aspects of it, but only recommend it when it's on sale at like 10 or 15 dollars. At its 20 something dollar price, it's just too much for what it actually offers. If more time was spent implementing gameplay and fleshing out the narrative, this could have been a stellar game. Don't get me wrong, this is not a bad game as I previously mentioned, but I found it very frustrating and for that it's left a sour taste in my mouth. If you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, hit the like and sub button. This is Shawnee Maurice from Haihu. Thanks for watching.